So today is the final capstone presentation of the students in the public relations class at Texas A&M San Antonio. And their presentations were informed by several different people um, outside of this classroom. One of them was George Lakoff, who wrote this book, Don't Think of an Elephant. Another one was Howard Rheingold, who wrote this book, NetSmart, and the seminal um, piece on Craft Detection 101. And also Dan Gilmore, and also Craig Newmark. So the presentations now are going to be from four different groups. They are supposed to take 15 minutes apiece. And we're going to start with group number one. Are you ready, guys? Let's go. How are you doing, guys? We are Group One. Um, we are with the Protect the Truth campaign. Um, we're going to go into um, how we hope to implement this and how the results that we're looking for. Um, and we have kind of a lengthy presentation so we can inform everybody about it. Um, my name is Seth Ruiz. Um, this is. I'm Katie Born. I'm Jessica Buffalo. I'm Lauren Montez. And Emily is back here. Our overall goal is to, um, is objective is to promote the importance of the truth in journalism. Um, we see a falter and um, a weakness that's kind of been happening in journalism recently, past few years, and um, we think that there still needs to be a very strong campaign to pushing truth and not biasness in the news anymore. Um, we know that biasness sells and that is appealing to the market, but we hope to implement a different campaign so the truth will come back into play. Uh, understanding, <laughs> understanding the goal in this situation means understanding the consequences of untruthful journalism. Um, and these consequences can include uh, leading others to feelings of fear and discrimination. Um, an example of this is Pizzagate, if any of y'all have heard of this. Um, this happened in a bar in Washington, D.C. called The Comet. And there was a man named Edgar Madison, who was 28 years old. He traveled to this bar with an AR-15 assault rifle. And he walked into the bar, fired shots, luckily didn't hit anybody um, before he surrendered to the police. And his actions, he explained, were due to a pre-election conspiracy um, that Hillary Clinton was holding a sex trafficking, a child sex trafficking ring in this bar. Uh, this conspiracy arose because of untruthful journalism. So as proven, this can have detrimental effects. Um, luckily in this case, nobody was hurt, but it easily could have turned into a deadly situation. Okay, for our target audiences, we have a primary target and then a secondary. Primary obviously is the first and most important to us. And that is um, our audience from the ages 18 to 35. That doesn't matter, gender doesn't matter, race doesn't matter, it's 18 to 35 of age. We chose um, to begin this uh, range at 18 because that is the age of people can register to vote and we really wanted to put a significance on that importance of you know this is your new responsibility civic. And, yeah this is your civic responsibility because um, I think many people especially with this past election they were not motivated to um, do the research and vote even and that's really sad and um, that especially this age group especially on the lower end of 18 to like 25 they have a really low register and turnout rate so um, we wanted to focus on changing that somewhat another reason we did this as our primary target market is because this is a really active uh, group for social media they are active on Facebook Twitter Instagram snapchat even and all these uh, different social media networks have 
implemented um, live feed, which is something that's new and it's something that is obviously true because it's live, it's happening now, so there's very little room to question the credibility and then also it's genuine because of that. So it's fast and genuine and that's really important to um, the younger market. And... Yeah. Okay. And then our secondary target uh, market is 35 and up, so it's the opposite of that. And, and we chose this as a secondary um, because they are very important, um, but they're not as hopeful as the first primary target audience um, is. They are more set in their ways. It takes a lot more to convince them to change their opinion, and um, they're not, they don't care as much, which is what we really wanted to focus on is caring, because with caring comes democracy and vice versa. Um, if you want to be able to change someone's opinion or you just want them to listen to you and hear your side of things, you have to kind of have that, like, compassionate connection with them and um, it doesn't have to be like intense or anything it's <coughs> minor but that's how you get them to listen to you and respect you um, and we do think that this um, age bracket has the ability to do that and they are active social media users as well more active on Facebook other than anything else but um, they use that as a platform to share their opinions and share articles they have seen and we really think that is the important step to when you share an article and you research the credibility of the source, that's where you can really protect the truth and call, not call them out, but respectfully say, you know, dude, like, this isn't, I researched this, this isn't right, maybe you shouldn't want, you don't want to, like, share this, and, um, because that ruins your credibility as well. We, we, we just felt like, um, not to, I mean, the importance of 35 and plus, I mean, they are probably the large part of voters, 35 and over. Um, they're more civically active uh, a part of the, the age spectrum. But it seems like once you get to the age of 35, you've kind of found yourself. Um, you understand where you fall in the political spectrum. Unfortunately, that's the way the world is today. It, it is a political spectrum, and the media falls on the political spectrum. And so they're, since they're more set in their ways, that's why we looked at this as a secondary market, because they're not as easily influenced as an 18 to 35-year-old person that is looking for themselves and finding out what they feel and starting to pay taxes and understand the world and how it works. Um, so that's another reason why we went to this group. Uh, the situation analysis uh, passed. Society looked, for, looked to the news for non-biased outlet. Um, what was going on in the world right now? No biasness, just the facts of what was going on. Um, that was a good thing. That kept credibility in news, um, and over time we've seen that kind of stop. Um, news, news outlets have made, uh, they, they found themselves on the bias spectrum. You've got MSNBC maybe or CNN on the left, and you've got Fox News on the right, and they're appealing more to their markets. And we understand that that's good for profitability. Um, you secure a base, and there's not a lot of changing between the, the different channels now because you know what you like and what you want to see. And um, so what we're hoping to do with this is promote the SBA, uh, SPJ Code of Ethics um, to report unbiased news and the facts. Um, instead of saying, I want to see what I like on the news, we want to see the facts, what really is going on in the world. Um, and so we can understand it and make good decisions on how we feel and what our perspective is, not be told what you know, our perspective should be. Um, so, and hopefully this will up the credibility of the news organizations and the media, and this could save us in a lot of different aspects that we'll get into in future testing. Um, the strengths of returning credibility to the media um, is getting back the checks and balances in government mostly. There's a lot of different aspects of how, you know, where the strengths are, but mainly focused on government and politics. The politics do, politicians do what they want, they do what they do in office. If media doesn't have credibility to report what's going on in office to the society, to society, the voters, and they don't have that credibility and we don't trust them, it doesn't matter what they report to try to shed light on maybe something that's going on behind closed doors in city council or in the mayor's races or something like that, or the presidential election. If, if they don't have that credibility, we don't believe them, and so politicians kind of just have free room to do what they'd like. Um, the weakness to this is loss of profits. At first, when promoting the truth starts to happen, I think that a lot of people are going to start uh, if a news organization starts promoting the truth first and stops 
kind of reporting to their biased group, they're going to see a loss of profits. But as this gains momentum and people are looking for truth and not biased news anymore, then the profits will return. Um, opportunities are new credible news organizations to arise. We've seen a lot of uh, news organizations arise on the left and on the right sides of the spectrum, but what we want is more in the middle, new organizations that promote the truth, and since this is being pushed and this is what we're trying to do, um, and people want this, then they'll start making profits, and then these outliers will see this and say, we need to go a different direction, we need to change our strategy, because what we were doing in the late 90s and the 2000s isn't working, and now people are wanting truth. Um, the threats are loss of viewership and loss of profitability at first, like I said. Um, I'm always picking up and watching Fox News. Well, maybe if they just start reporting the truth, I'm going to be kind of mad with them and look for another outlet to give me what I want from news. But as Protect the Truth gets more momentum and keeps moving, then those profitabilities will come up and Fox News will start seeing their profitabilities lose and hopefully they'll, they'll change course. <coughs> okay. So this is our digital media analysis. And so really, um, we just want to come back to um, focusing on that younger generation, 18 to 35. Um, the, all of these different social media networks, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, they all have that live feed um, part of it now. Um, so that's, again, with the fast and genuine news, it's happening now, I'm telling you now, it's genuine because it's, you can see it. There's no one fabricating it, it's there. Um, so we wanted to really kind of pick up on that, and when we do our, if we were to do our campaign, it would go through those kind of elements to kind of get everyone excited. And again, with the excited, you need influencers, you need people with um, big names. And so we're hoping that this would be the type of thing where people who would see this, um, you know, celebrities, actors, actresses, writers, you know, even like just so social media people that are big on social media and have a big following, they like our message and they want to share it. That we're not. We're not looking to really like kind of pay people, but we're hoping that people will just find it within themselves and really feel that passion and want to make a change and we'll just And understand the importance yeah, of it, it and then lead others that they are already leading. Yeah, because like, you, you share the message and you spread the message and then that's how it grows. And then we don't, and even though all these things like live feed is a trend right now, we don't know how long it'll be. Hopefully it'll last. I think it's pretty cool. But we don't want this message to be a trend. We want it to last for years and years. We want to, this to be like a new wave of an idea so people, you know, don't get rid of it after a few weeks and stop using the hashtag or they just, they, they live by this now and that's, they change everything about themselves and how they, you know, they use their media literacy skills to move on with their lives and um, really understand the importance of credibility. So our overall obje objective of Protect the Truth isn't necessarily just social media and a hashtag. We want to create it as if it's its own brand and its own campaign. So you see this and you know the reason behind it and you know um, you know, what comes from it. It's just like you would go and double check something on Google. It's a website, but we all know Google is being, you know, you can find your answers here. So that's kind of what we want to do and make it for Protect the Truth as well as truthful journalism being reported. Um, our goal was mostly focused on the younger users, which are more social media um, <coughs> involved. So increasing the likes, the retweets, the shares to different audiences and different people. Um, you know, just because they're ages 18 to 35, they have different people who are on their social medias who will see that and spread it to people they know and be more involved with it. As well as our strategies, um, the overall strategy uh, for the entire I guess uh, protect the truth campaign would be to promote the truth of journalism and then our tactics we created a Facebook and Twitter account that we'll go into later um, also social media campaigns as well as you know even um, advertisements on Facebook that go into a deeper article that maybe the page posted or retweeted or did research on and did the credit um, also an idea was a face to protect the truth like um, she was saying earlier about celebrities as much as we don't want to admit it we do look up to them and we do follow what they do we can we see someone wearing a pair of shoes and we go buy those expensive pair of shoes we can see someone's you know opinions and what they support and maybe it's just an idea that can be open to you and you only saw it because of somebody else that's a little bit I guess it's more famous and promoting that 
We want the, our audience to get involved in the social media by following us on our Facebook page at Protect the Truth 2017 and on Twitter, Truth underscore Protect. And by also using the hashtag Protect the Truth. By this, we created it to promote the, the importance of truth and journalism because we want because we want people to know that there are still that there are people out there that want to know and to um, that they want to protect the truth. That there's users that want to know the truth that don't want to be listening or seeing uh, fake news or or any type of media that's giving them the wrong information. We want them to uh, join our Protect the Truth campaign to enforce the truth in journalism. We also want to protect the truth by, by from politicians who twist and give out the wrong information and attack the media by saying by calling it fake news because we know that they get to do whatever they want and we as viewers and audience we see that they're doing what they want but they don't let us see the important thing that's going on. They just want to talk about and let us know about what benefits them, but not us as their audience. And we also connected our Twitter and Facebook account because we know that not a lot of people are active on both pages. So for those who are the, between the group of 18 and 35, they're probably more active on Twitter. But we also know that the 35 and up are not active on Twitter, so they're using Facebook more. So we connected them so we can have both groups see and view the, the stories we're sharing for them to, to know what's going on and what the, t the type of stories that are being shared as by certain news. So we also want y'all to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and also use Protect the Truth on any type of news. On the base of Protect the Truth, we just had some different ideas. As far as the celebrities, um, Meryl Streep, Kerry Washington, Clint Eastwood, and Barack Obama are all publicly against um, you know, false media. And they were actually, I did some research and I Googled them, and they all stand behind different organizations that help fund you know, something either Protect the Truth or along the lines of getting you know, the truth out there and not posting false information and false stories. Um, for our annual budget, we allotted $60,000, and we were going to spread that between social media ads, page development, the manager salary, and a radio spot. For the ads, we have $25,000 set aside. That's $2,100 monthly for the ads seen on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, for the page development, uh, we were going to do the page once the hashtag got out there, more people started uh, knowing about it, becoming involved and we set aside $7,000 for startup fees and $800 a month for updates and glitch fixes that may um, arise. As for the radio ad, or the radio spot, we set aside $2,100 for that, and the social media manager will receive $15,900, and they're in charge of creating, scheduling, and responding to all posts and ads, and they're supposed to be actively engaging on these, so responding to people um, that you know become involved or try to comment on it. They're supposed to actively engage with people um, on the Facebook and Twitter pages. And our evaluation is going to be tracked through the Facebook campaign, social engagement, and the network campaign. For the Facebook campaign, uh, it's a mystery right now, so we don't know who's doing it, but uh, whoever's chosen for the Facebook campaign, uh, their publicity is going to be tracked. So how much attention they receive from being a part of this campaign. So whether more people um, engage with them, you know, their Twitter accounts or Instagram accounts. And for the social engagement, we're looking for an increase in favorites, likes, retweets, followers, shares, and the use of the hashtag protect the truth. So we're looking on our uh, Twitter page, Facebook page, for just um, more people actively being involved in it. And as for the network campaign, uh, this is to inform the audience on what the campaign is about. So basically, it's going to be the website. Once the we have active users on social media, we would then create a website strictly just based on information and stories that we researched and that we went in and actually did the false media and what was true. Any questions, guys? That's our presentation. Thank you for listening. Um, and do we all have any questions?
get you guys. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> putting radio PSA, uh, PSAs up. And then starting uh, uh, on the last three months of the campaign, we would really ramp up stuff. We would send more press releases to, to more outlets. We would, uh, we would send uh, features to, to different outlets that wanted to support our messages, featuring membership, or featuring members, prominent members, um, new members, just to get uh, the people involved. Um, and we would also have two membership banquets, which would happen um, on the third month and a six month uh, for those who wanted to join our campaign with a monetary contribution. So measuring success is extremely important for us. <clears throat> it's gonna be how we make sure we continue to generate revenue and keep our campaign going. So it begins with social media engagement. Social media engagement uh, is tracking the likes, the shares, the reposts, the retweets. Uh, we're gonna use a tool called Muck, Muck Wrap. It's a social media engagement tracker. That's going to give us feedback <coughs> on every time where one of our posts is shared, it's retweeted, it's reposted. Uh, social media engagement uh, will continue through the comments. We'll have team members designated to sift through the comments on a daily basis, reply to people in the community, uh, answer questions that are left on there for us. And it's important that we document that because it's going to be how we determine. <coughs> it's going to be how we determine. Uh, the highest percent of positive feedback to find out which campaigns are and are not working. Uh, furthermore, we're going to use hashtags and hashtag tools. Uh, some tools are Rebel Mouse, Tag Board, and Talk Walker. This is going to provide us with the conversation, shares, and usage, as well as demographics. Uh, combining the three tools together, it's a little similar to using Google Analytics, except we're going to be a little more involved with the community. We'll be able to actually tap into the conversations people are having using our hashtags. Uh, so it's going to be very important that we use two different hashtags, one for our online campaign and one for our offline campaign, again, to track whether one is working better than the other. <clears throat> the website's going to have two parts. It's going to consist of revenue uh, through merchandise and reven revenue through membership. So there will be a direct link on our website to link to all our social media pages. Merchandise can be purchased directly through there or shared through the, uh, through the social media links. We'll have things such as shirts, mugs, pens, pads, hats, tumblers, uh, all with our logo and our slogan on there that can be bought and purchased or bought and shared. Um, bulk buying will reduce the cost. The second way to measure will, our success will be through professional and citizen memberships. So a professional membership will be paid monthly. Uh, they can only be purchased by those who are in the news organization or in broadcast, uh, photojournalism, any of these departments, and they're, more than half of their yearly salary comes from those jobs. Uh, they'll also be able to use our copyrighted emblem so that they can post on their stories or anything that they use to, so that others can recognize that they're part of an organization that holds them to a higher standard. Uh, for the citizen or enthusiast membership, that'll be paid monthly and also be less expensive. And the key here is that citizens will be able to read stories and fact check them themselves and if they find holes in the story, they can submit it through our website so that professionals can take a closer look into it and provide better truth for everyone involved. So this right here is just uh, some renderings that uh, one of our team members did. Um, she's currently not here today, but uh, as you can see, uh, she was involved uh, greatly. Um, these are some of the mugs we have. Uh, we had t-shirt designs, um, and there is one of our flyer designs also. All right, so as far as budgeting, uh, considering this is a nonprofit organization, we're gonna need 
some donations. We're going to need investors and fundraisers. So with the donations, it can be donated through the GoFundMe, which is free. So we would set up this Facebook, um, give a statement what our mission is, and we would have people donate. Um, as far as the investors, we would expect that to be from journalists, people in broadcasting, and ultimately people who want to seek the truth. Um, for fundraising events, it can include car washes, a bake sale, raffles, and things of that sort. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So for the fundraiser, we obviously want to set up at colleges, fiestas, or basically anywhere where it's a free event, we can set up a booth. Um, there we would have something similar to Christie's uh, thing where we would do a game where it would be a will, you would spin it, you would determine uh, with the information provided if that is true or false. We would then give you um, our merchandise. So it would be a bracelet or a pin that you can take with you. It'll have our website on there. So you can go there, purchase some of our items. We would also ask you to um, download one of our apps. So with downloading it, you would receive 10% off your merchandise. Um, so these are some of our um, costs, where we projected an estimate to just begin about $35,000. So some of the expenses would go towards the banner ads, which approximately $2,000 we would use um, Facebook, Pandora, YouTube, and Instagram to put some of the advertisements on there uh, with the hashtag Truth Matters. We would want to focus also on local newspaper, so which would be the Express News, the Wrangler, Texas Monthly, um, and furthermore, social media, we would want to include, as far as working, here is some paid workers, which would be the director, obviously, he would or she would get paid. We would prefer a lot of volunteers because we are nonprofit, so we are just getting started. And um, and use interns. So not only are they getting the experience they need, but it also helps us financially as well. Um, we would also like to be um, on the radio. We would want to use our campaign and promote that on the top five radio stations. So we've included that into our budget as well. Um, we also feel that having surveys is important because it'll help us improve in our campaign. Um, lastly is business card and merchandising. We set aside that for pins, t-shirts, bracelets, and stickers. And this is just kind of a rough draft of everything that we've included in our initial budget. And um, ultimately just give back to the community and we feel like everybody deserves to know the truth and that's what our campaign is about. Thank you. Okay. Okay. It's time for some feedback. Uche is not going to come up here because he thinks that y'all are going to hate me once I leave. But that's all right. Y'all don't know me. <laughs> wow. So I got a couple of questions. And, and before I start, my name is Christian Aqua. I own, alongside my husband, Bethany East PR and Management Consulting. We've been in San Antonio for five years. We focus a lot on economic development, foreign direct investment consulting, and strategic communications for government uh, regulatory organizations. Our clients include Brook City Base, Edwards Aquifer Authority, Port San Antonio, Texas a and as of a couple of weeks ago, uh, City of San Antonio Econ Development Foundation, the department, and a number of other organizations across the city. So we don't do a lot necessarily with small business, but we definitely do a lot with uh, campaigns that create a conclusive messaging 
enact a lot of community members as well as uh, uh, introduce different options in terms of decision making, spending habits, and things of that sort. That being said, when are they going to kick me off of Twitter? Because I'm 33. <laughs> when are they going to kick me off of Twitter? Um, Y'all, I really appreciate you, uh, CA, for bringing us in on this. This was really, really a great eye-opening experience. I love market research, and this is definitely going to go into something, into my little pocket of, of information that I use for my clients. Um, Y'all did a lot of pres uh, presenting and spoke a lot of numbers, and I didn't see a lot of sites. Uh, resources cited and I would have loved to see that if we're talking about truthfulness I would have loved to hear US News 2014 said that 42 percent of 35 year olds do not read news in the newspaper anymore that means that how many of us read the newspaper the Express News daily I mean like on the website not the actual business you don't paper. read the paper <laughs> business journal stands on your monthly Sounds on your mag. No. <laughs> so you guys did a, a presentation about fake news and you don't read the news. No, That's no, no, no. We didn't say we didn't read the news. Oh, who, who, who reads the express news online or not? Oh, favorite journalists? Anybody can give me one. Huffington Post. Huffington Post. What about Huffington Post? Is a blog. Like um, like a local mm -hmm. essay. Or the San Antonio Current, is that down? The San Antonio Current, it's kind of, it's kind of you know, uh, it's a stretch, but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I would have preferred to hear a lot more about from folks that read the news, that really focus on the news. This is a presentation about newsworthiness, about fake news, and about realizing fake news. And it, and it really will come across immediately if you that you don't read the news. And that's what it did. Um, Again, y'all don't hate me when I leave, but yeah. oh, um, so let's see. I heard phrases like I know for a fact, and I'm like, wait, what's the fact? Uh, the putting the scholars, the, there's a lot of mention of getting huge amounts of uh, marketing collateral t shirts, buttons, stickers, things of that sort. But at the same time, there was not a necessarily solutions given for the issue. I would have, uh, have anyone, has anyone small business owners in here? Yes, small business owner, and we're familiar with SBDC, SWIMBY, small uh, minority women, uh, black, and veteran-owned business uh, classifications, where you actually sign up to legitimize yourself to be to be recognized as a certain type of uh, business owner. That's what I thought I was coming here to see today. That you all were going to say, hey, let's create campaign-wise. It's not just creating collateral but it's about creating a real conversation, legitimizing some of these journalists and creating almost a database that will allow your users and your conversationalists to drive from. So you're basically creating a new news source, legitimizing the news sources. And that's what I, I, I a few of you danced around it. Um, uh, the last two danced around that issue and I, and I thought you were going to go there. You were going to say we were going to create a platform where we can legitimize news sources. Um, those that mention celebrities and celebrity sponsorships. Now let's talk about sponsorships. Do we get sponsorships already? Have you all created campaigns where you've gotten sponsorships? Mm -hmm. It's hard as shit to get a sponsorship. You have to have relationships running out of you like water mm -hmm. to get sponsorship dollars. Um, in five years here in San Antonio, ten years, I'm originally from Detroit, um, uh, in, in those amounts of time, gaining sponsor dollars has been the most that, that businesses have, have, have asked me to advocate for. Get us a sponsor for this and we'll get a sponsor for that. Tell me again how and in what space is it possible to get a sponsor dollar for a brand new campaign, right? Celebrity endorsements is almost a new thing. There's less than 35 years of celebrity endorsements. Before then, there was there was a standalone industry where fashion stood alone, where uh, health and fitness and wellness stood alone, and then celebrity lifestyle stood alone. And it wasn't until the advent of news sources like OK, like those celebrity, uh, like the fake news sites, like Enquirer, uh, and all those little celebrity newspapers began to recognize the 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 weight that a celebrity could put on a brand or a product 
or say the shoes and things of that sort. So that's a very new thing. At the same time, they've recognized their, their strength in, in influencing people, and so the value of a sponsorship has increased so much um, to the point where CRM, your uh, adjusted customer cost, how much it takes, how much it costs to receive a customer, to get a customer, the cost of doing business increases thousands fold. So whereas you would pay $45 in 1912 to get a celebrity to wear your bag, I'm making push up with fake news, right? Now it costs $45,000 to get somebody to do some things for you. So it's very, very expensive, and I want you all to think realistically when it comes to that. Uh, I know I'm talking fast, but I got a meeting to get to, so I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Determining what fake news is. Fake news is not, say, bias news is not fake news, you all. Bias news is just bias news. They they put out there that they are biased. Fox News knows that they're biased. They don't. They also watch MSNBC. They they quote it a lot. They watch CNN. But CNN is also biased. So that is not necessarily fake news. However, the things like the Onion, which is parody, <coughs> they absolutely share that it's a parody news site. Is again not fake news. Things like uh, uh, Stephen Colbert and. Give me another late night show where they provide, what's the guy? Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. They are providing tidbits of information. <coughs> Again, not fake news. They have a comedic approach. Not fake news. Um, but so I wanted, I wanted to feel that from you all. Do we? There is, a couple of years ago, um, I don't remember the source, but they adjusted their numbers saying that students, college students, was actually getting their news from Colbert. Would you guys say that that's true? No. No? Um, really? Why was I like people don't know who Cobra is. I mean, am I in? Okay. In, our, in our community, Cobra was kind of doing that. We wasn't really watching Cobra. John Stewart, too. Oh, he's funny, but I mean, who, I was watching Colbert when who I got, in your right mind wasn't getting news from him, though? Yeah. Not, David Colbert <laughs> was actually sharing a lot of his stuff, and yeah. so was, uh, what's the other John guy? Stewart. John Stewart. John Stewart. Sharing a lot of his <laughs> stuff, and, that, and they were actually a highly revered news source for millennial audiences. And I say, when I say millennial audiences, we're on the cusp of those baby boomers, the children of the baby boomers, right? Or the Gen, Gen Xers, um, the early grandkids of Gen Xers. Um, but that was a very, very reputable news source for some folks, and they were actually coming out and creating uh, political decisions, making purchasing decisions, creating conversations with their friends on Facebook and social media and things of that sort. At the same time, opinion is not necessarily fake news. You cannot rule opinion as fake. It is opinion. And that's, of course, something that should be cited. Bloggers often have to say, Helping the Post has a disclaimer at the end, this is a blog. Mm -hmm. um, they often have to say this is a sponsored post. So there's laws that are right now being promoted uh, that won't allow for the, the sharing of news as news, but the sharing of opinion as news, excuse me. So I really wanted you all to dive into that, the newest legislation that won't allow me to spam a billion people just because I picked up their email addresses from a book that I stole. I could do it, but it's not laws against that. I would have loved to hear a little bit about those things from your presentations. So it's just a couple of little holes, and I really, <coughs> I, I'm very, very grateful for you all to come, uh, for you all to do this and allow me to come in, and basically I'm about to eat y'all up. It's like, I'm not, I'm done, I don't want to say. Um, let's see, so we made statements like politicians do what they want. We made station, uh, statements like, uh, uh, the algorithm is computer-based. Code-based is the word for that one. Um, and that fake news was, bi biased news is fake news, or fake news victims, or, oh, that's the one I really like. Trey, Sam, Autumn, Danielle, and Betty. You guys are on the cusp of creating a support group for fake news victims. I wanted you to go down that, al that alleyway. That would have been really, really great. You know, that type of content is something that could be paid attention to, shared, we can talk about how we lose friends because uh, because the fake news we block folks because of fake news. I really wanted you to go down that in that that uh, alleyway uh, in your presentation, and I wanted you to talk about how easy it is to go viral. What is phishing? And do we all know what phishing is? P H I S H I N G, which is the code that Google uses to make sure that uh, sites are real. That uh, the J is better at this stuff. 
Um, but the, that's the that's fishing, right? They create all these fishes. They create all this this code to go out and look at sites and determine if they're real or fake, or if they're just good. That's why you get on the third page of Google and you're basically lost for the rest of your life. Um, but I wanted you to go there. I wanted you to talk again about coding. Coding is not necessarily computers are, do not have a life of their own. We still have to put out the information into them, mm -hmm. um, and until they create something else, then that's what we have. So. We still control basically everything that we put out. At the same time, we want to make sure that we know that there's already places and things in place to legitimize some of these sites, but there are victims. And I wanted you to talk about those victims, those blues and those friends. I like your marketing. That's really nice. Really nice. Cool color, straight box. Um, let's see. Uh, group three, Christy, Vanessa, and I couldn't write the rest of y'all's names down. Truth or fake? Truth is a responsibility. I really thought that that was good. But I wanted you all to promote, again, truthful journalism. I wanted you all to promote truthful journalists um, and then turn them into celebrities. Not necessarily get celebrity endorsements, but have people speak out on what the good, who are their trusted celebrity, uh, uh, trusted journalists. As publicists, we often tend to create great relationships with journalists. I know a lot of journalists here in San Antonio, again, living in a lot of different markets, though, journalists have different lifestyles. San Antonio is a lot of, oh God, just don't keep me in It's a lot of uh, uh, desktop journalists. They sit there and yes, they don't do a lot of investigations. They don't jump in to, uh, ooh, <coughs> see, hey, don't you write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but they do it, right? So so it's, it's, it really draws, um, it really kind of pulls away from the story unless you have a really, really informative publicist that can give you some good details and, can, and they can then turn around and do a lot of fact checking, which is good. But I really wanted you all to um, to talk about that portion and, and, and creating, we have the ability to create local celebrities in this city, in this country, because of social media. Local celebrities is a real big thing. I know you won't um, get to read it, but I think we actually expanded upon that in our essay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I felt it. We, we were just, yeah, we were just trying to be short and sweet. <laughs> yes. Understood. <laughs> I felt that. But there, there's influencers all over. Yeah. And so I think that... If, if we put aside the need to get celebrity endorsements, and we almost create our own celebrities by by really optimizing their truthfulness as it pertains to us. So y'all really focus hyper locally for a national campaign, but you still want to get these celebrities to do stuff. What Bruce Willis got to do with me? Like I would talk to Bruce Willis, but he ain't got nothing to do with my news, right? Uh, or whomever celebrity would be. Uh, so we got that. You know, which is like right there. Okay. okay. So group, that was group three, group two, we talked about y'all, okay. Group one, I liked the way y'all started off um, with the 35 year olds don't care as much. I said, how sway? How do you don't care? <laughs> I didn't understand that. I'm like, what you mean? I don't want to try to cite that source um, and be a qualifier for truthfulness. Create a qualification, <coughs> create some code that can optimize whether the source is being <laughs> shared, the source is being used, and the stories being put out are real stories. I wanted, to, I wanted to see more of that. PR campaigns is about creating new platforms, yes, but it's about really offering some key solutions and putting new procedures in place. So uh, when I say new procedures in place, that website situation that you all had going was great, but it didn't create a lot of interactivity. It didn't create a grading system. It wasn't a Yelp for journalists or a Yelp for news sources, which is something that I think will probably be fantastic. Those folks, um, number four, Truth Matters, Joe, Val, Chris, and the rest of y'all, again, didn't get your names. I was really trying to keep up. I was trying to keep up. My well, pencil got a little bit. Um, y'all mentioned investors. Yes. Investors are clutch because sponsorships and membership dollars is hard. It's easier to get one major company to give you $5,000 than 500 people to give you $10 as long as you got the proper pitch. So y'all really had an y'all had a great idea. Y'all mixed the y'all mixed awareness of truth, of truthfulness and of fake news with a legitimacy campaign and I thought that that was fantastic. Um, y'all said that the death of truth is the is social media, but then you quoted BuzzFeed. Like it wasn't a lot of correlation on that. Mm -hmm. And that I didn't really get that. Um, uh, important people or popular people, I don't know what I was doing there. Um, your marketing is really, really good, and you got the number one in my book. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank y'all. Okay, you ain't gonna talk about me behind my back. Don't talk about my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's what I need from you guys. I'm, um, thank you. Thank you so much, Chris Sanocho. Thank you for your time. That is the most precious thing in the journal. entire world. Huh? Yes. Read this recent news. Pick up the business journal. Um, pick up the Express News. Pick up that San Antonio monthly magazine on the train set for June. Um, Selfless plug. <laughs> Humble brag. Um, and then, of course, Hashtag opportunity report for my monthly newsletter so that you can see my fake news. Mm -hmm. And she has my business card, so I'll have a, 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 a few. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to make sure I have your slideshow. I want to see your slideshow. So um, if you pull them onto this desktop, I can put my thumb drive on there and you can slide somebody from each group. Make sure you slide your slideshows onto that. Um, the, um, the recording, it's going to be a couple of days before we get it up because it went, the, that hard drive was filled up and then we had to put stuff in the cameras to start recording, so. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, is there a place to upload the paper or do we give you a hard copy? Um, I would like you to upload the paper. Um, uh, can you email the paper to me? Or e email both the paper? And a oh, link to your Google that. Drive. Can you okay. you can get a shareable link, right? Because all of your papers are in Google Drive. Yes. Or not? I don't know how to do that. Uh, okay. you handle it? All right. If, or if you give me a hard copy, I'll take the hard copy, and I will be happy with the hard copy as well. Do you have any quick like general feedback for us? So, so, um, so quick, quick general feedback from me is that you guys did, you guys did an amazing job with um, trying to reach out of ju not just being really tiny and, and thinking about the whole country. And that's really what, what I really wanted, was not to just think about San Antonio, and you did. And you also said, here's how to localize it when you were talking about bringing it, making it big and making it little. I personally think that in something like this, you would be able to get cooperation, some cooperation from somebody like Popovich. I think that would work. Oh. I, I really do, um, because I think that he's, He's one of those people who calls bullshit on stuff, and he he really feels strongly about that, and it, and and it has nothing to do with the game. Sometimes that's where he's at. So I think that I think that you can that you could pull in some some people, some of those celebrities, um, because I think all of them. And th and she did have a good point about we many of us have been victims of that, have been victims of something that was pushed. You know that was either really leaned one way or another. So the whole notion that that it's that um, we have all been impacted by it one way or another, in addition to the fact that we had a friend send us something that was crap. <laughs> you know, um, and I think and I think you get it. Also, the other thing that's really important to me, which is trying to make it socially unacceptable, right, to to pass along stuff and to try to. Part of the solution is to make it socially more acceptable to say, hey, this is what's real. And that, that was my real goal for you guys, was to say, how can you help try to change behavior? So in terms of my, what I was hoping for you guys to do, you guys did it. You guys nailed it, which is the, you know, this is, this is what's worthy of respect. And, and trying to change people's behavior, you know? to not be a litter bug, not be a smoker, not be a whatever, right? And that's that, it, it might be that's what you guys nailed, absolutely. That's what I was going to say, we, I, we appreciate your feedback and everything, but we went according to your criteria and what you put out, and right. so, you know, maybe right. we... Right, and she, and, and I didn't... I yeah, didn't, no, no, I know. So, so she was coming at you from a completely yeah. different place, yeah. which is actually kind of cool, because yeah. stuff yeah. I hadn't even yeah. thought of, right? Yeah. But, but from what I was looking for, <laughs> I, I mean, that's one of those organizations that it was created for good, but like for it, it's not for everybody. Like my our small business, I mean, yeah, we were certified for about a, I think a couple of years, but we got bombarded with government, you know, uh, RFPs, and we, we weren't big enough to handle it. You know, and so I, I think that was, I, I, that was a little bit off of what, what, and so what I was looking for is, can you help change people's behavior and help change them think, how they think of what is, what is important, you know, and what's respectable. 
and the you guys nail it. Really soon. Um, make sure I have your slideshows okay, and make sure I have a hard copy. And